6060 main pump calibration. G'day, it's Luke here from Rackage Machinery. Here's part two of the three part series on the A20V main pumps used in the 6060 and RH340B excavators. This one's about main pump calibration. It's how to tune the main pumps on the machine. If you haven't seen part one, it might be worth a look. It'll give you some understanding and some context as to why and how we go about these adjustments. This one will be specifically on just making the adjustments. We call it a pump calibration because when you calibrate something, you're validating the output of a device relative to the inputs. So we get the PST input at a specific setting and we make the adjustments to achieve the, the correct output of flow rate in the pump internally there's several phases that the PST input has to influence before it achieves the output. We're not interested in what happens in the middle there during the onboard setting of these. We just want to achieve the correct output. There's other tune-up procedures that are out there that are um, basically you take the PST input to achieve a certain MST but it still makes an assumption on the, the phases that lead to the pump output so we've tried to take it a little bit further than that just to achieve some greater accuracy whether it's better or not i couldn't tell you um i haven't compared the two but it gives us confidence that that the input and the outputs are exactly what we're what we're trying to achieve i'm only going to be talking about the pst valve in this discussion the setting the dr on this is um or your pressure cutoff is a pretty basic adjustment you'll find that in oem procedures Why would you need to calibrate the pumps on the machine? First reason is uh, if you receive a complaint from the operator of underperformance where your basic pressures and settings have all been confirmed to be okay. Travel deviation, so if the machine doesn't walk in a straight line, almost always this is caused by poor pump calibration with these pumps. PST pressure loss from internal leakage in the PST valve on the pump and then that would cause you to replace the PST valve which affects the adjustment as you remove and install it. Also resealing, if you were to reseal that you're also taking the valve out of adjustment to remove it. So some orientation for the presentation. We'll be viewing the pumps in a number of slides in this setup here. So looking from above the front of the machine to the bottom of the slide and the main pump numbering convention starting here at the front left pump. So your odd numbers are all to the front of the machine, if that's a way of helping you remember it. I'll be using this diagram as well, just showing the PST solenoids and their input into the pumps throughout a number of slides also. Just to show the pump outputs, I've just to make it tidy, I've just used uh, these basic line diagrams of the pump outputs. So here I'm showing main pump 5 and 6 combined here. In reality, 5 and 6 don't combine on the machine at all. It's 5 will bridge across to number 3 through the high pressure filter housing, but we're only interested in the pump outputs. So just to simplify it, I've just drawn it like that, just some clarity at the output. So complaint number 1 of underperformance. Your operator might be complaining that the machine is a bit slow to lift the bucket while loading into a truck. You check the machine, you find you've got full PST pressure and your cycle times, like a dual engine cycle time, you may not even pick this up, but your single engine cycle times will detect this and you'll see, you might find that one of your pumps is down 20, 25%. So when they should be putting out 650 litres a minute. This example, we've got main pump three putting out 450 litres a minute. So we're down 200 litres a minute on this side. This is a very slight example. If all these pumps were the same age, you'd probably find that several of the pumps would be out of adjustment. One of the more common complaints you might encounter with these machines is travel deviation. So it's not able to walk straight when the operators giving it full pedal actuation. So on the older machines where main pumps 3, 4, 5 and 6 are responsible for travel in this example, we've got main pumps 4 and 6 both putting out 400 litres a minute, sending 800 to your left hand travel motors. 
you know, poor pump calibration, you might have 100 litres less a minute coming out of main pump three here. So you've got 700 litres going to that. That will absolutely make your machine deviate while it's travelling. And it is a big problem for operators when they're trying to work the machine along a bench and keep a straight face to mine. So poor pump calibration is almost always, in my experience, the cause of this. There's a few other reasons. I'll talk about that in part three of this video series. But this one is by far the most common that I've encountered. And the third example I'll give of a requirement to calibrate the pumps is a PST internal leakage. This will cause a significant loss of performance on the machine. So your operator would certainly be complaining about this. In this example, we're showing main pump one, the PST valve has internal leakage in the spools and the PST signal being sent by the solenoid is leaking off through this valve. So the pressure isn't able to rise to what the PST solenoid is demanding. So in this example, the PST solenoid is giving it 100% and it should be 42 bar, but because of the leakage, it's unable to supplement the loss and it can only achieve 36 bar. So even though the problem is only with this pump, it actually affects all four of these pumps simply because it's only getting 36 bar to tell them to stroke up. And that would only, that would cause a 17% loss of flow rate from those pumps combined, which is pretty substantial. One of the challenges that makes these problems a bit more obscure and difficult to identify is the configuration of the PST lines. The fact that it's just a solenoid on the left hand side here, a single line that goes over to the pumps and then it just uses a, a series of T pieces to branch across to all the other pumps. So you can't individually test any pump uh, without disconnecting lines and capping three pumps off and then testing, shutting it down, so on and so forth. When encountering any of these issues, the most common reaction is to replace the whole pump simply because there's very little information available on how to accurately identify and correct these problems. Hopefully we address all of that here today with this video. That's why we encourage people to use a PST pump isolation system. So this is our manifolds and valves we can supply as a kit, if you like. Um, you can do it any way you like. You could put a ball valve on each PST uh, input into the pump. I prefer this method simply because they're two valve banks that are displayed so you can clearly see which ones are on and off and also it's numbered top to bottom so you can sequence the pump calibration correctly. So there's a couple of ways to measure pump output in flow. So the first one is obviously a flow meter which you would have to install on the machine. Alternatively, you do a cycle time. So in this basic diagram, we've got a pump supplying a cylinder here Let's say it takes 60 seconds to extend that one cylinder. We know the cylinder is 1420 millimeters of travel and it's 300 millimeters internal diameter, which is 100 liters. So we know that's just taken 100 liters a minute. So you can confidently say that pump's just produced 100 liters a minute. So we use pump isolation to do that. So now with pump isolation, we can use a single pump and measure a cycle time to make our adjustments based off a calculated flow rate. Some of the advantages over using a flow meter is one, the testing can be done from the safety of the operator's cab while, so while the machine's loaded and, and moving. High pressure hoses do not easily move and a flex to allow the installation of a flow meter. So there's no requirement to open hydraulic systems this way either. So doing a test, you can, you can arrive to a machine at a lunchtime break and then do this test very quickly. Flow meters at main pump ranges can be expensive. And if you want to install permanent flow meters, the, the question is 12 months later when you want to do a test, are they going to even work when you need, need them to? So the pump isolation confidently addresses all those problems you can encounter here. Now we're moving into the procedure of the pump calibration. The first thing you'll need to do is get your hydraulic oil over 55 degrees. You might have to throw a tarp over your cooler modules just to maintain that heat in your hydraulics and keep your pumps warm. 
I've included a tooling list here so this presentation will be available to download in the description below there'll be a link there so you can download this and print it out it's also got the tables on the last two slides of the parameters you need to record and fill out as you go through the procedure once your hydraulic oil is up to temperature and stable set up your attachment in these positions shown whether it's a backhoe or a shovel and you'll be then doing a boom lift cycle time and individual pumps with various PST input settings to the pump and you'll be making your adjustments to achieve these times per pump with shovels I've only calculated these times simply because I've only ever done the studies on backhoes so with the the volumes of the cylinders on a shovel uh, this is the sort of time you'll be chasing there it'll be easy to establish what the correct times are once you've got pump isolation fitted you can carry out this test on a new pump and adjust what your specification is that you're chasing there now that we're set up we'll move into the actual calibration procedure so first thing run your single engine at high idle start with the left second verify that you've got 42 bar PST pressure to the pump when there's 820 milliamps the third thing check your p-port servo pressure so for the serial numbers 145 and below of the 6060s your servo board on the front of the hydraulic tank will look a bit like this you want to check this pressure here and confirm that it's 80 bar and for serial numbers 146 and above it's where it looks like this you want to check that it's 50 bar for those models um, to set them I would set them individually left hand and right hand confirm you've got 50 bar on single engine operation then when you complete just go back and make sure that 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 with dual engine it is still 50 bar then you need to disconnect your PST DIN plug now you manually set your PST pressure to 27 bar and you do that by adjusting this 13 mil screw and 4 mil uh, Allen key on top you wind that in until your PST pressure comes up to 27 bar just confirm that when you switch off three pumps on the ball valves that it's still 27 bar that reduced leakage there might see that pressure bump up to say 28 29 bar so then make sure it's adjusted again to 27 bar on one pump attach a 100 bar gauge to the MST test port on the pump on the pump that you're testing so let's say this is main pump one so you just you just want it on that pump at the at this point you want to see a 30 bar difference to your P port servo so on your machines with 80 bar P port servo you want to see 50 bar there if it's 50 bar servo on zero numbers 146 and above you want to see 20 bar there and that's only when it's at 27 bar to make adjustments to that you adjust the DW valve so this will go the opposite to most relief valves which you wind it in to increase the pressure you actually wind this out to increase that MST pressure set up your machine as previously discussed so for your backhoe like that and for your face shovel like this uh, isolate the three pumps not being tested at the PST isolation manifold so we're testing main pump one here switch off two three and four then carry out a boom lift cycle time start your stopwatch from when the bucket begins to move not from when the joysticks moved there'll be a pretty significant delay there when you're on single pump cycle time then you carry it out on all of the other pumps individually and record the times in the back of the presentation I've got a table that you can fill out when you print this out and you can make those recordings and then make your adjustments to that if your cycle times are out slightly make an adjustment to the H min on the PST valve so you will need to loosen the 46 mil lock nut here and then make an adjustment to this 30 mil hex for the H min I wouldn't move it any more than a quarter of a turn for if for a 10 second adjustment thereabouts and then lock it up and then retest as per the previous steps once you've 
corrected the cycle times on all of them then reset your PST manual pressure adjustment back to 7.5 bar or as low as it'll go generally it doesn't go much below 9 or 10 bar on the machines that I've done it with reconnect your PST solenoid valve DIN plug once your PST solenoid valve is plugged back in you can go ahead then and test each pump individually with 42 bar PST input so carry out your cycle times on all four pumps again. If you saw part one of this three-part series about the main pumps, you would know that the H-Max serves as a secondary Q-Max type adjustment. So in my experience, I've very rarely needed to actually go ahead and change the H-Max. If you do need to make any changes, here's how you do it. So it's a 17mm lock nut and a 3mm Allen key. You wind that in to reduce your maximum flow or you wind it out to increase it. Then you can go ahead and repeat this procedure on the other engine. So here we have the 6060 main pump calibration in a printable record sheet format. So the blue box is indicating that's the where on the dealing with the left hand pumps on, on this one. Um, you can move through each step, either enter your parameter or tick the boxes as you move through the, the stages and at this step eight, we're at 27 bar, so do your cycle times. You can record them in the first box, make your adjustments and record them in the second, and then go to 42 bar and, and, and again there. And for the right hand, it's just the red boxes, same format. Uh, so you can print them out and carry out the tests just with these single pages. So that wraps up the Rackage Machinery 6060 main pump calibration procedure training video. Any questions or comments on how to do that or if anyone's got any uh, alternate versions of this I'd be really interested to hear it. Um, hit me up on the comments here on YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, you can contact me on any of those directly. Yeah I'm happy to hear it so thanks for watching.